Animal Con 2022, could you introduce yourself and say who you're here with? I am Kevin McCurley and I own New England Reptile and that's who I'm here with. One thing that you work a lot with is monitors. Could you share why you like them so much? Computer monitors are very <laughs> critical. No, so Varana, so it's lizards. So monitor lizards, uh, I love. I'm enthralled with them because they're uh, like a very intellectual, Reptile, and we often don't uh, associate intelligence with reptiles. And it turns out, if we took it like some target species, I, I happen to target Varana Salvatore, which is the Asian water monitor. It has to deal with croc monitors and lace monitors, highly intelligent animals. They have uh, great reasoning, they know you. You can have a very strong bond with these animals and you establish this level of trust. And once you develop that level of trust, you get so much more from this animal and you revel in how intelligent it is, how aware it is, how it gives you special tolerances that it allows you to do and you can like manipulate it like you're dealing with a cat or a dog and you're like, how is this lizard allowing me to do this? And the misnomer is that, you know, reptiles don't get these, uh, values and these, you know, personalities. What draws you to them and how much time do you have to spend with some of these animals to get them to recognize you and know and trust you? Don't think of the animal as you want it to be. You need to see it as it is and then you need to work with it. So I go through these things like modes. So they're in a sleep mode, they're in acquiring their food mode, and they're in a fear and defensive mode, and they're in a thinking mode. And first, you need to read basic, just body language, behaviors, blinking of the eyes, how the tongue's working and all that, and how that animal is. And you really wanna get that animal as, in quickest period of time into thinking mode. So a lot of times, we misunderstand the defensive mode and we start pushing ourselves on there and we're imposing our will. And what we wanna do is we wanna establish trust. Get that animal to not be fearful of you because these animals are never mean. It's fearful and that causes the defensive behavior. I wanna get them out of the defensive behavior. I wanna get them into a thinking mode. Once they're in a thinking mode, I then can start having my give and takes with the animal and I start building my relationship with that animal. Once they realize you're not gonna hurt them and nothing bad comes of it, each one of these little acts I call a thread. And these are called threads of trust. So I might make believe stuff here. And these threads of trust, which is short little episodes, could be 10 seconds or more, and you go into the animal's environment, something happens, it, it smells you or whatever, and then you leave the environment without the animal losing its mind. So it's not losing its cookies, doesn't go into its defensive mode. And at that point, that is a positive thread. And you keep doing this, it might be several times in a day, go in there, do something, and then you leave. And the animal, if something good happens or something that's not bad to the animal, it downloads that, so it's always recording. Just like you guys are recording me, it's recording these little micro things, and they build up all these little threads, and from that learning, you continue to progress and go further. It seems like you're really passionate about these animals. Is this something that you knew as a kid, like you were passionate from the start? What got you into all this? I had some brothers who used to like to torture me and beat me up and you know, so they did all the whatever. So I learned that if I went and hid in the woods, they couldn't find me. Well, what's in the woods? Bugs. Started out with bugs, obsessed with bugs. I started like studying these little things as a little kid, studying these little simple animals, but they were so unique and so odd and so fascinating. I'm still fascinated now. From there, I went to like catching snakes, garter snakes, milk snakes and whatnot. But it started out early, I was a fish hobbyist very much into fish, love birds and all that stuff like that. But I definitely had the problem pretty early on. I was obsessed with, you know, losing myself in these animals. And I've continued that to this day. In closing, is there any advice you wanna to give to people just getting started? Understanding the modes and uh, realizing it's not just like this fascinating animal, but what do you expect of that animal? Do you, like if you, you want something that's gonna sit on your shoulder while you're watching TV and you feed it mostly vegetation and fruit and some insects, your dragon is really good. I want to have a snake that may be 16 foot long. So you have to just anticipate what it is, what's your responsibility, understanding everything. And uh, one thing that's really great, and this is why I love ZooMed, this is like no joke. I'm a huge supporter of ZooMed. ZooMed makes fantastic products. 
I'm a professional keeper. I have infinite resources and uh, Zoomed literally makes all sorts of products that I can keep Bullens pythons and all this crazy stuff, these unique one-of-kind animals, and they give me all these different tools that I can imp implement and it allows me to be more successful in my management, my husbandry, ultimately my breeding. So it's really kind of nice how far we've come in that day and age where there's way better tools to keep these animals than let's say 10 or 15 years ago and it continues to progress. Even just the new UV lighting that you guys are doing with the LEDs and all that, you know, that kind of stuff's pretty exciting.